In this video, I'm gonna show you the setup we are using to automate ProPresenter and LightKey with Ableton Live using a MIDI network built on iConnectivity MIDI interfaces. So for the past four years of my worship ministry, I've been automating lyrics and lights in worship um, so that we have perfect lighting cues, perfect lyric cues all the time. We never have those distracting mistakes. And uh, believe it or not, the, the Holy Spirit still shows up. Uh, even though we automate all these things, we have very powerful worship gatherings and Ableton Live gives us the flexibility to, to jump around songs, to, to customize our arrangements and things like that. Anyhow, we were using uh, the MIDI Network Session app, which is built into Mac computers, into the operating system. We we're using this app to make the connection uh, over Wi-Fi or over uh, a wired LAN Ethernet network um, to get these computers to start talking to one another over MIDI. Um, so this is that MIDI network setup app right here. Um, and you know, you've probably seen some of my videos on this or you've even maybe taken some of my courses and I show you this, this route of, of making this connection. But unfortunately, um, over the past couple of years, uh, which has kind of been, it, there's kind of been this trend with Apple um, to not really care that much about uh, per, really like resourcing and developing for their professional users. And maybe that's kind of an unfair judgment to make against them, but uh, we all know like Apple's more focused on iPhone development and things like that uh, for consumers more than they are for making sure that things work well for professionals such as having a functioning keyboard on your flagship laptop or um, making sure that if you have a MIDI network you know, app that it actually works all the time. Because what was happening is it would work fine, like great, and then it would just randomly like crash on us. Um, and this often happened like in rehearsal and I researched and researched, I, I tried you know, turning off IVP6 or all these networking protocol things that I don't know about. If you've encountered this problem and if you found a definite fix to it, let me know. Other people would love to know. But when all these problems were happening, I just realized it would be better to just not be dependent on this app that's built into Mac's operating system, but rather go with an ecosystem for MIDI networking built by a company that th that's what they specialize in and like that's what they focus on. So that's what brought me uh, to do some more research and, and to learn about the iConnectivity uh, MIDI interfaces. And iConnectivity makes lots of different products. These interfaces here are the iConnect MIDI 4 Plus. So these two interfaces take the place of this MIDI network setup app that I was using on Mac. And what's been awesome is that this is a very robust setup. We haven't experienced any failing glitches or anything like that. Um, and there's like no latency, it works great. It's RTP MIDI, real-time protocol MIDI, which to my knowledge just means that it's, it's, re it's really stable and it's really fast. It's gonna work great. So this is our latest setup when it comes to MIDI automation. Um, so now, you know, here's, here's an example of it in action. I have it all configured right now. So watch, I'll press play in Ableton Live, um, and then you're gonna see uh, some of the cues firing here in ProPresenter. So just started Only King Forever, and then we have uh, light key. We're gonna see some lighting cues go on here as well. So all of this is happening. All this automation is happening over uh, uh, Ethernet local area network. That's why I have this switch right here, and these interfaces are connected to this, and then these interfaces are also connected to the computers, and all this automationing um, is happening, and it works really, really well. So let me break down for you just briefly this hardware setup that we have going on. So we have two of the iConnect MIDI 4 Pluses, just a stellar name choices here, iConnect <laughs> in your interface. Anyways, the, the iConnect MIDI 4, whatever we call it here, we have two of these. And the important thing is that you have to have the interfaces that have the ethernet jack on the back of them so that they can be, be ready to plug into a local area network and they can start talking to each other. The Mio 4 by iConnectivity also has an ethernet jack. I wish for our purposes in iConnectivity, if you ever watch this video, these are great products, I love them so far. They're kind of overkill for our context for worship ministry for this, this thing. So if you ever came out with like a smaller version, it's maybe like half the price, but also has half the ports or something like that. We just need an ethernet jack 
and maybe like two USB ports and that, that'll, that'll work great. Uh, right now, this is like, this is like way overkill for my situation, uh, but it works well. So you can get the iConnect MIDI 4 Plus or the Mio 4 and get two of them, if, especially if you have a computer on stage and a computer in your tech booth and you'll be ready to go. And then of course, you'll have a local area network. And we already have one of those set up because at our church because we use Dante Audio Networking. So we use the same Dante Audio Network for all of our MIDI automation as well. Um, and here's what it looks like. You have a ethernet switch um, and maybe you have multiple switches and then you just make sure everything's plugged in together in the same network and then all these computers can start talking to each other. Then you'll notice that these computers are plugged into these interfaces like this is in this interface via USB jack one and this is in USB jack one on this interface um, because the MIDI signals are going out of Ableton through the USB cable into this guy and then out of the ethernet jack on this guy into the ethernet network doing all the magical network stuff and then into the ethernet jack on the back of this guy out of the USB cable into this computer. So the, the connection between the computers and the interfaces is USB, it's not ethernet. Um, Cause when you think of ethernet sometimes with these computers, you're like, oh, is it like Dante and I, I bring ethernet straight to the computer? No, you, you're, what, what you're doing, th these things, the way I think about it is like, these are just like MIDI devices on steroids. I think like the same way that if I were running main stage on my computer and I needed a um, hardware MIDI piano like to, to control main stage and I plug it in via USB into the computer, it's kind of the same concept with, with, with this guy. Um, you're using USB um, or MIDI over USB to send those signals to the interfaces and then the interfaces talk to each other over the network. Um, and what's awesome about these pieces of software is that there's just so much customization you can do in terms of porting and routing and, and all this fancy stuff uh, that just makes you sound so cool once you once you can talk about it and you, and you know what you're doing with it. So, like you could you could do ridiculous stuff. Like you could tell it. Let's say let's say I use this illustration, but I don't know who who would use this. But let's say you have a computer in your tech booth running main stage, right next to your mixing console. I don't know why why you do this, but let's say you have one there. But you wanted to have your, your piano, your, your MIDI controller piano, like a Novation launch key on stage, controlling that, that computer back in the tech booth. So like I could play, I could basically connect the keyboard into this guy. It's gonna send the MIDI signals over the network uh, to this guy, and then this is gonna be plugged into that computer running main stage, and there you go. Like you're you're playing keyboard on stage and main stage running your tech booth on another computer. Or maybe a more practical application is I could use my Looptimus or my tech booth team, I could get them a Looptimus or some sort of MIDI triggering device and it would be plugged into their interface up here and then it would send those MIDI notes through the network into the, the, the interface that's on stage with Ableton into the computer running Ableton to trigger our songs and stuff like that. Uh, we already have a different setup we do that, like I have this little remote setup app that I use so they can hit like bumper cue from here and then you'll see that it just queued up the bumper on ProPresenter but it controlled this Ableton project. Um, there's some really advanced stuff um, that you can do with this and, and this just kind of takes it to another level in terms of how much hardware you can plug into your MIDI automation system and, and how much customization you can accomplish. So that is our MIDI automation setup. I just created a course on how to set this up. It's like, I think it's gonna be like an hour long course because it's, it's pretty in-depth stuff and I really try to help you wrap your mind around how all this stuff works so then you can kind of run with it and do whatever you want to accomplish. So uh, I just finished up the lesson. It's, it's really going to be a lesson for my Lead Worship with Ableton course which is inside of either worshipleaderschool.com or worshiptechschool.com. So if you're a student uh, and you've been automating things but you've been facing these same glitches that I have uh, been with the Mac networking, MIDI networking app, then I recommend going this route. Uh, and you can follow the, the instructions and the lessons to get that done uh, and to get this set up at your church. Uh, if you're not a student of Worship Leader School uh, or Worship Tech School, then you should just join because not only will you get access to this lesson that I just created, uh, not this video, but the hour long lesson I created before recording this video, but you'll also get access to 
a bunch, hours and hours and hours of advanced Ableton training to, to create exactly uh, what you see here. So we'll put the links in the description of this video for that, as well as links to uh, these devices if you want to pick some up uh, yourself. Uh, but I really hope uh, this helps you uh, and inspires you in terms of just creating a really robust MIDI networking solution for your church. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in ministry. You can check out some related videos right over here. And don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.